Fordham, adjunct professor of history at Charleston Southern University in the Citadel, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, some interesting buried history. You see, during the segregation era in places like Charleston, South Carolina, there were relatively few average, everyday black citizens who wrote about their experiences, and so a lot of times, uh, the, a lot of the black newspapers of those days, many of them were not saved and don't exist, so we have very little to go by as to how these people dealt with their predicament. Well, one such case that we found very recently was that of uh, Dr. John McFall, who practiced at a drugstore in Morris Street in Charleston, South Carolina, during the early 1900s. My mother, in fact, uh, she was lived in downtown Charleston in the 1950s, and she remembered going to Dr. McFall's drugstore. And it turns out that many years after Dr. McFall died in 1954, his grandniece, a lady by the name of uh, the name of uh, Lenice McFall Hollister, managed to find his manuscript that he wrote for private use and had it published this year as Resisting Jim Crow, the Autobiography of Dr. John McFall. You know, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very valuable resource because it tells of how Dr. McFall, who was born in 1878, some 13 years after slavery and the year after Reconstruction officially ended in South Carolina, he talks about growing up feeling fairly secure. His father was a doctor and they grew up uh, in fairly modest but decent circumstances, and he felt a little bit of promise. He was destined to become a doctor and go to medical school and so forth, but he also, when he was a young man, he saw segregation arrive when Benjamin Tillman, the then senator of South Carolina, made segregation the law of the state in 1895, and he lived to see the effects that this had in his community. But not only does he talk about how he experienced that, one of the stories that he tells in this book that I'd like to share is his experience with the great freedom fighter Frederick Douglass. I did a post some time ago about when Frederick Douglass came to Charleston, South Carolina to speak at Mount Zion AME Church on March the 5th, 1888, and guess what? When he was 10 years old, Dr. McFall was there. Let's listen to what he has to say about that. Perhaps the most impressive experience I encountered about this time was seeing and hearing Frederick Douglass, who came to Charleston to deliver a lecture at Mount Zion Church. He arrived at the city a day or two before his lecture and stopped at the home of Dr. Crum on Cumming Street, just around the corner from ours. One afternoon, he was taken for a drive about the city. All along the line of the drive, the sidewalks were lined with Negroes who had assembled to do him honor. He had a splendid figure. A man of medium stature, dark brown skin, his head covered with gray hair, worn somewhat long so it gave his face a leonine expression as he rose from his seat in his carriage at frequent intervals to bow to the crowds in acknowledgment of their plaudit. Father took me to the lecture. Mr. Douglas held his audience spellbound, and even I, although somewhat sleepy, because, but came wide awake when he told of his experiences as a slave and how on one occasion his master, well, his master whipped him severely and marked during the whipping, give a nigger an inch and he will take an L, that he then and there determined that he would run away. Of those present at the lecture were many who had had their experiences as slaves and so could fully comprehend the sincerity of his talk. And as I write this, I wonder, he adds, how many of the present generation know how truly great is the life of Douglas and how far-reaching were the results of his efforts to destroy slavery and to gain rights of citizenship for the Negroes. Isn't it wonderful not only to experience something like that, but to preserve it so that future generations would learn and understand what it is to be the presence in such greatness? Well, he also tells of how he struggled to go to medical school in Philadelphia, and even there, while you didn't have the separate water fountains and such of the Deep South, he experienced a lot of discrimination when he was trying to get his medical degree. And so when he came back to Charleston, the city was very segregated, and he talks about how he had to deal with such things as the Ku Klux Klan here in Charleston and the denial of rights of African Americans and even the basic decency of being referred to as Dr. McFall when 
a lot of white people in those days didn't even want to call them Mr. and such. And how he managed to succeed in having this drugstore for the rest of his life, even down to the generation after him. And I think that Miss McFall has really done society a great favor by finding her granduncle's manuscript and putting this out there for the general public to see, because we don't get to hear the voices of people like that very often. And they stand as a testament to us today who are going through far less and encourage us to move even further because of those who went through much worse than we did with far less, I think is inspiring for anyone. So I would encourage you to look it up where you can and find a copy of uh, Ms. Lenise McFall Hollister's book, Resisting Jim Crow, the Autobiography of Dr. John McFall, so that you can learn not only what they went through, but how some people managed to succeed in spite of all events, all efforts to crush them during that time period. And so hopefully it'll help you succeed in what you're trying to do today. With that said, this is Damon Fordham.